So here I am with the uh, owner of uh, uh, a little sort of Airbnb. He's a really nice guy, helped me out, told me the best route to go, which was pretty much the route I was going to go on. But he was really helpful. He didn't speak much English, and I didn't speak. I don't speak much Spanish. So uh, yeah. So today was everything was getting so much better for me now because the, the weather was warming up because it was pretty cold the first few days. Uh, heading back up. But the further north you go, the warmer it gets, and um, yeah, it was getting like in, into the mid 20s, 20 to 25, which is about 70, 70 to 80 uh, Fahrenheit. Um, but you know, it's a, you know, th th all this is just about getting the miles in it, and this was a big, uh, another big long day, uh, big long days riding. Um, uh, to get to uh, Commodore Rivadavia, River um, it was about 1,100 kilometres, um, and uh, <laughs> and I felt every every mile of it uh, by the end of the day. Um, it actually uh, on the map it says that it took me like 16 hours, but it didn't. Uh, something went wrong with the with the uh, mapping system, the river map, river maps, if you would click on the link to view the full post. Um, but it was about 1100 kilometres, um, so, but it was, you know, pretty much 120, 130 kilometres an hour um, for a lot of it, because it was just really big open roads, there wasn't a lot of traffic around. So I was pretty much, uh, I was pretty much flying for most of it. Um, and, and this was one of the days where I ran into a huge amount of issues with uh, with gas stops. You know, there's there's always rolling strikes going on in in uh, Argentina and Chile uh, in relation to gas. And today was a bit of a nightmare for me. Um, basically, I had to go off off route um, and took a bit of a punt, and it didn't work out for me. Uh, that that happens from time to time, and. Um, it was uh, just one of those things where you you think that you're uh, you sort of plan your trip beforehand and say, okay, it's a it's a bit of a stretch. If you've got a low, a, you know, a small gas tank on your thing, you're going to need gas, especially on this route. Uh, but in Chile and Argentina, you're going to need that extra gas. Basically, I have to go about 40, 50 miles out of my way um, to. Um, I had to go 40 to 50 miles out of my way to go back to uh, to get gas, um, yeah, because the, the gas stations that I went to were closed. Well, they weren't closed; they just didn't have any gas left. And um, and I was really, I was really basically hitting hitting the hitting the limit. Um, I had an extra gallon on the back of my bike, um, but I ran out. Um, and there's, you know, there's not a lot you can do about it. Basically, what happened was I, 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 I ran out of gas about three miles before the um, the gas station, which is a pain in the backside. Uh, but I was on empty for like 40 miles, so so I suppose I can't really complain. But it was, uh, for all intents and purposes, it was pretty painful. But I, I was lucky. I got a guy straight away. Stopped a, a security guy, a highway security guy, and uh, he stopped. Took me to the gas station, uh, and then um, and then dropped me back to the bike. We hit the bike on the side of the road down a down a hill, and um, took me to the gas station. Back to the bike. Within 20 minutes, I was back on the road again. So uh, very lucky indeed. And. Uh, that someone came with it, but people are like that in South America, they'll help you no matter what. The, the problem is your bike security. Uh, I took the tank bag off, I took my bag off, uh, my backpack, my tank bag, uh, but I left the side bags on. He, he just said there won't be a problem. And this is me heading, this is how far, only about a mile back, not even a mile back, half a mile back I'd lost, ran out of gas. And this gas station was just full of cars because you know all the gas stations are closed. So it was pretty, pretty painful, but it was a little nice little town actually. This this town, and there, it, there wasn't much to see on the road, I can tell you. Um, 
But anyway, I got to Commodoro River Davia, um, pretty, pretty, uh, in, in not bad time, at about 12 hours, so this is about 6 p.m. I got there and um, I had some problems finding the place, but uh, that I was staying at to stop off a couple of times because it was like an Airbnb and it, the mapping wasn't really accurate. Um, but anyway. Uh, Here's some of the pics along the way. It's pretty, it was pretty barren to be honest. There wasn't a lot to see. It was just a it was just about doing the miles. You know, went through about three or four towns along the way, that's about all. And um, and and then basically got to Commodoro River River Davia and there was a the guy who actually owned the Airbnb was a uh, an American guy, um, a really nice guy, and uh, and, and it, he, he built these. It was quite; they were quite new. These places that he built, um, and yeah, that, that, it was pretty good actually. It was he really done a really good job and took his time building them, and uh, they're really really nice. Um, I'll put a link in the in the post uh, to show you. And um, I was going to try and get my mate to go along and. Who was coming behind me about four or five days behind me but he'd already booked out all his apartments so um, you get that a bit there's quite a few I've met quite a few uh, internationals today and this was this was actually when I got into Commodore the, this gas station was out of gas as well so it's just it's just uh, you just got to run with it he, they told me to come back in a few hours and they'll, they'll have they'll have gas again in a few hours so that wasn't too much of a problem um, and I just went back there a few hours later. There's a line of cars again, and this 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 is another. I don't I don't know if you'll see this, but just bloody dogs on roads, you know. You know, just they just come out of nowhere and just get. You know, they try to bite your leg, you know. So there's, there's one I've said in previous videos. One of two ways you deal with dogs. Um, you either, if you can, accelerate, get the hell out of there, do that. Um, if you can't accelerate or it's going to be a little bit too dangerous to accelerate um, then you basically just go to a complete stop and, and nearly every time the dogs just stop dead and don't don't do anything you know um, this is where I thought the place was the first time I think, oh, is this the place wasn't wasn't quite sure, and then I just it just didn't look like a place where people would stay. So basically, had to go back down the hill. It was pretty steep, actually. It doesn't look very steep. Uh, and uh, yeah, kept kept looking, and then the dogs started coming out from the other property. So basically, had to scoot up. I went up this driveway as well. This look maybe this looked like it might be might be a a complex. Uh, maybe not. Have a look, and I'm thinking now if that's where I'm staying, jeez. You know, <laughs> um, I'd actually seen some pictures, so I knew that it, it, it wasn't it. So back I go again. Still not sure. There's the dogs just waiting for me. Stop! What are you guys doing? Why aren't you, why aren't you biting me? Oh. Pick a line and go for it. And then the, the owner actually comes out to group me. But they're quite nice, you know. There's, you had like, I think the two or three of them there. He was a really nice guy. He was he was still working on the on the properties. And... Just explaining to him how I couldn't find the place. <laughs> All right, guys. Any questions or comments? Leave them below. Thank you very much.